There's a new ETF on the market that's creating a lot of buzz, mainly because it's being hyped by Dave Portnoy of Barstool Sports. Here's what it's all about and why you shouldn't invest in it. How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay and today we're talking about the new Buzz ETF that just hit the market this week. You've probably heard of this ETF because it's being promoted heavily by Dave Portnoy who's the founder of Barstool Sports. In a video he shared on his Instagram and is actually on the ETF website, which I'm not going to show you here because I learned my lesson about copyright strikes. He basically pumps up this new ETF, how it's going to revolutionize investing and yada yada yada. It's the greatest next best investment there will ever be. So let's look at what this ETF is all about, how it works, and why I think you shouldn't bother investing in it. First off, the official name of this ETF is the Vanek Vectors Social Sentiment ETF, and it's trading under the ticker symbol BUZZ, B-U-Z-Z. -Z. And basically how this ETF is gonna work is Vanek has created some sort of AI that is going to track social media, Reddit, blog posts, internet chatter, probably YouTube videos, for the stocks people are talking about the most and getting the most positive sentiment out there on the internet. That AI is then going to score those stocks 1 to 75 based on some formula they have posted on their website and that's how the ETF is going to choose what stocks it's going to buy and how it's going to weight its index, its 75 stocks that it will hold. Now there are some limiting factors to the ETF. The ETF is going to choose 75 stocks, but it's restricting itself to US stocks with a market cap of over $5 billion. So these are all very large cap stocks. That means this ETF isn't going to find the next GameStop or Bed Bath & Beyond or any of the smaller meme stocks that have really rocketed in the past few months. So let's take a look now at the Buzz website and look at the stocks that the fund is currently holding. So you can see currently at the launch here, the top holdings of the Buzz ETF are DraftKings, Twitter, Ford Motor Company, American Airlines, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple. And then it holds a bunch of other stock going all the way down to the smallest holdings, which are Activision Blizzard, Gilead Sciences, Cloudfare, Chewy, and CRISPR Therapeutics. So the Buzz ETF also has a stipulation that no one stock can make up more than around 3% of the entire portfolio. So that's why you see the largest holdings here are all right around 3% and the smallest holdings are about a third of a percent, barely anything. And I mentioned earlier that how the Buzz ETF is going to work is their AI is going to track social sentiment about these stocks across all corners of the internet over one month periods. So that means every month on whatever day they choose to rebalance their fund, the Buzz ETF is going to be selling a whole bunch of stocks and buying a whole bunch of new stocks based on the, you know, the sentiment of the internet at that time. So let's take a look at what that looks like because they published that right here on their website as well. So this is the US sentiment leaders for their February 2021 monthly index rebalance. And you can see, just in one month, They've removed FedEx, TE Connectivity, FireEye, Micron, Dropbox, CrowdStrike, Nike, Canopy Growth, Costco, Trade Desk, Best Buy, and Citigroup. So just in a one month time frame, you've seen turnover where 12 stocks, the positions have been completely closed. The fund will have to realize the gains or losses on those 12 positions probably short term because they're doing this every month and they've now had to initiate new positions in 12 brand new stocks just because a lot of people across the internet happen to be hyped up about them that month. Now Buzz does state that 
if any of their bottom holdings, the stocks 70 through 75 on the rankings, if from one month to the next, they fall from that 70 to 75 range down to about 80 or so, they fall just out, they won't bother trading those stocks in and out. They'll keep them where they are to reduce the trading costs. But as you can see, just this past month, they still kicked 12 stocks out of the ETF holdings. And there really is no minimum or maximum to how much turnover there really may be from month to month. So the next thing I'm thinking about is, what the heck are the fees like on this ETF? Most actively managed funds and ETFs carry higher expense ratios with them because of all the buying and selling and tinkering within the fund that needs to be done, all the management that needs to be done. So if we look up the expense ratio for this Buzz ETF, we'll see that the gross expense ratio is 0.75%. Now, to be honest, that's not as bad as I was expecting, but that's still higher than average, even for an actively managed fund. I think over the past year, the average expense ratio on an actively managed fund or ETF is somewhere around 0.6%. Now compare that to some of my favorite investments, my index ETFs from Vanguard, where you're at like 0.03 or 0.04, 0.75 is a lot higher than that, so you're paying a lot more in expenses. Now, Vanek is stating they're not charging any trading fees or commission fees on all the buying and selling of stocks that's gonna happen in this fund. So even though they're not directly hitting you with that via a fund expense, it's still baked into the returns you're gonna experience with that fund. So this Buzz ETF is still gonna to have to overcome all those fees from that buying and selling, those capital gains, etc. So now let's get into the reasons why I think you shouldn't waste your time or money investing with this Buzz ETF. The first reason is Dave Portnoy. Now, if you're unfamiliar with who Dave Portnoy is, Dave Portnoy is a loud, obnoxious, arrogant asshole. And he's pretty proud of that fact too. Now, Dave has garnered some goodwill over recent months. He's done a lot of good. He started up a fund that raised a lot of money to help out struggling small businesses over the past year or so. But we can't forget who Dave Portnoy really is. But I'm not saying don't invest in this just because I may have a personal distaste for this guy. Dave Portnoy's involvement is a red flag for this ETF, mainly because Dave Portnoy is a partner and part owner of Buzz Holdings, which is the firm beneath the underlying index that this Buzz ETF is investing in. And that's a problem for a couple reasons. As I mentioned, Dave Portnoy is very loud, brash, and outspoken. He likes to speak his mind. He likes to promote the stocks he likes, as he's been doing since he got into day trading this past year. But now that Dave is involved with Buzz Holdings and this Buzz ETF is using that as an index, if Dave starts talking up any particular stock to his millions of Twitter followers, or the millions of people who consume Barstool sports content, that could have a significant impact on the online sentiment surrounding that stock, which then the AI that this ETF runs off of will be reading and taking into consideration. So Dave could directly affect the holdings of this ETF through his social media presence and his large following. And that might raise some questions and red flags to the people over at the SEC. The second reason why I don't think you should waste your time or money investing in the Buzz ETF is because of the expense ratio and the strategy. The expense ratio, like we mentioned, is 0.75%, and the strategy behind this fund is nothing more than measuring public sentiment and trying to pounce on what's hot at the time. You're chasing trends. Now, if you contrast that with 
another group of extremely popular ETFs right now, which are the ARK Invest ETFs led by Kathy Wood and her team. The ARK Invest ETFs also generally carry an expense ratio of 0.75%, but the ARK ETFs come with great leadership and Kathy Wood, who's a brilliant person and a brilliant investor, and they have a very well-defined strategy behind each of them. Each ARK ETF is trying to invest in a different sector of new or disruptive innovation. So ARK has an ETF on autonomous technology and robots. They have a next generation internet ETF. They have a genomic revolution ETF and they have a fintech innovation ETF. All very strategic, very well defined and led by outstanding management. And even then, I don't invest in the ARK ETFs because it's still highly unlikely that they will outperform just an S&P 500 index over the long term. So with those ETFs, you're getting great management, brilliant people, and a specific well-defined strategy with the ETF. With this Buzz ETF, they're basically just saying, we got a computer program and we're gonna chase what's popular. And the last reason you shouldn't invest in the Buzz ETF is they've done this before. The Buzz ATI and the Buzz Index that this ETF is now following and it's dictating its trading was used as recently as 2016 to power the Sprott Buzz Social Media Insights ETF, which traded under the ticker symbol BUZ. Now that ETF launched in 2016 and closed down about three years later. So now basically they're just reviving that same concept. They added a second Z to the ticker symbol and they're passing it off as some great new innovation and world changing investment. Now maybe they've improved their AI and whatever in the time since that fund closed down and this one opened, but I kind of get the feeling that we've seen this movie before. So yeah, you could say I'm not a fan of the new Buzz ETF. I don't think you should invest in it. To me, it just seems like they're trying to pounce on the recent popularity of things like Wall Street bets and all the people that have gotten into day trading over the past year and how much investing is being talked about online these days. Seems like they're just trying to jump on that hot trend, which is the entire strategy for their ETF. So maybe it will work, maybe it won't. I can't tell you for certain, but my feeling is you're better off letting this one pass on by. Let me know if you agree with me or disagree with me down in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and check out these videos over here if you want to learn more sound ways to invest and manage your money. And I'll see you in the next video.